Okay. So good morning. <laughs> excited about this morning. Excited about this season. Of course, some people are officially on Thanksgiving break. I'm happy for you. <laughs> it's a blessing. And so um, some of us are going to work a few days next week. And so um, we're super excited about the Thanksgiving season. Of course, as the song says that I remember from when I was a little girl, every day is a day of Thanksgiving. And we should be thankful to God every day for the great things that he's done, for who he is to us, for the people that he's joined to us in our lives. We should be grateful for that. And so if you haven't, if you say, well, I don't have anything to be thankful for, if you can think that thought, you should be thankful because you're in your right mind, kind of sort of in a way, I'm going to get back to yourself, but you're in your right mind enough to form that thought. There are people that wish that they had our lives, wish that they had the facility of their limbs, that wish they had minds to think and mouths to speak and wish that they could get around and do the things that we often take for granted. And so we have to be thankful in everything, be thankful to God because this is the will of God concerning us. And so I'm excited about the opportunity to share with you this morning what God has put on my heart. Um, many of you know um, my mother. Many of you know uh, where Destiny Momentum started and how it began and how my ministry began. But for those of you that don't know, my mother began Virtue Impact Fellowship, which was an outreach for women during her lifetime that I assisted her in. And uh, when she went home to be with the Lord, that responsibility uh, became mine. The anointing was on her life is on mine. And I'm grateful to God for what he's doing in and through Destiny Momentum. And I thank God for all of you. But during her time here on earth in Virtual Impact Fellowship, she hosted themed events every year. Uh, we had Wild Night, we had Tropical Night, we did Christmas events, we had all these events that were themed. And it was just about creating an experience for women to enjoy themselves. If you were able to be a part of any of those events, you know what I'm talking about. They were always fun, the food was always awesome, the decor was always excellent. And so um, I really miss seeing her her visions come to come to life like I love to see an idea form in her mind and to see it all come together I miss that so so much because her mind was just amazing and the thoughts that God gave her and the ideas that he gave her were just amazing but I said all that to say this November was always uh, where we did the wild night and that was themed with everything animal print good morning Everything was animal print. The decor was animal print. All the ladies wore animal print. Whatever, I mean, like, and y'all, we saw all kinds of animal print. But Wild Night, Wild was an acronym for Women Inspired to Live Their Destiny. And y'all, she's been doing this since, like, 1999. This was before Women's Empowerment got real popular. This was before events got real popular. She was already doing this. She was always ahead of her time. And so it was about women inspired to live their destiny. And so since this is November, I'm going to keep on with that, with that theme, with that vibe of women inspired to live their destiny. Because there are a lot of women who are, they, they, hmm, they get excited about who they are and then they lose it. And they see somebody else do something and it kind of reminds them of their purpose. And they say, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing such and such. But to keep that inspiration going sometimes is hard because of the times that we're living in. These are some interesting times that we're living in. These are, we, we're seeing some things in the news every day that's disheartening, that's discouraging. But we have hope in God, but we're still human. And we still see these things that are happening that don't make sense. These things happening that are not right. These things that are happening that we know are ungodly and yet this is the world that we're living in right now. This is where we are right now. And so sometimes it's being inspired to live your destiny can cause a little bit more than what we have. Sometimes it's going to it's going to cause for more than what we can see in front of us. Sometimes it's going to call for more than just, oh, yeah, I remember I'm supposed to be doing such and such. No, we have to truly be inspired to live our destiny. And so. The Lord took me to this scripture, 1 Peter 5 and 7. Write it down. Pull it up in your Bible app. 
uh, write it down, put it in your notes on your phone. This is an important scripture for right now. And God keeps taking me to this scripture. Just about every time I've had to minister, he keeps taking me to this scripture because of the times that we're living in. And as women, the things that we shoulder and the things that we hold on to and the things that we have to push other people through and be there for everybody else and encourage everybody else and make sure that things keep flowing smoothly in spite of the world that we live in, sometimes it's a lot. So 1 Peter 5 and 7, I'm going to read it from the Amplified. It says, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully so everything that we're going through all of our anxiety the worry the concerns everything that's on our minds everything that we see that's unjust everything that doesn't play out the way that we believe that it should all these things we have to give that to god every day <laughs> because it's stuff happening every day. If you're going to be a woman that's inspired to live her destiny, you are going to have to learn how to take those anxieties and those cares and those frustrations and give it to God in your personal time with him. That's why the enemy fights us so much for our prayer time. That's why during your prayer time, that's when you see people start calling. That's when you see all of a sudden people start texting. That's when all of a sudden your favorite marathon on Netflix, you know, you found your favorite show on Netflix and you want to see the marathon. That is when we see the most distraction is when we want to spend time with the Lord. And why is that? Because he knows that a praying woman is a powerful woman. He knows that a, a purposed woman is a powerful woman. He knows that a woman that has made her mind on being inspired to live her destiny, he knows that you are a danger to what he's doing. He's a That you are a danger to his kingdom. And so I want to encourage you today to be inspired to live your destiny. And sometimes when you hear the word inspiration, you think, eh, okay, fine. You know, people are inspirational. You know, that's fine. It's an inspirational song. Okay, that's fine. But to truly be inspired, you say, what is it going to take for me to truly be inspired so that I can stick to this? Because there's such a thing as temporary inspiration. Sometimes you may feel like, oh, I'm inspired. Okay, I feel good. You know, you can go to a conference or you can watch something virtually or you can watch a YouTube video or you can watch a snippet of something or you can hear a song and say, oh, oh yeah, I'm inspired. Okay, but then when it comes time to do the work, when it comes time to stay with it, what do we do? Oh, well, maybe it's not my time. You know, maybe, you know, I need to do a little bit more. Or maybe, you know, um, I need to do this next year. Or maybe, how do you know you even have next year? How do you even know when people say, oh, I can do that, you know, next year. I can, um, I can start that vision next year. I can do it year after next. Let me tell you something. If I learned nothing else from my mama's life, I learned that you have to take the days that you have and do what God has called you to do because you do not know how long you have. If somebody had told me that woman was going to leave here in her early 50s, I would be like, child, I know you are. She got at least hit 75. Like, at least. Like, I can't picture her leaving that, that early and that soon. But what if she had said... Oh, I'll wait until, you know, later on to prepare Lindsay. I'll wait until she's, you know, closer to 40 to prepare her for ministry. I'll wait until later on to pour into these women. I'll wait till later on to encourage and support. I'll wait until later on to send these girls to college. I'll wait until later on to help with tuition. And I'll wait until later on to help them through trauma. Like, what if she had said, I'm going to wait till next year? We always feel like we have more time and we use that time as a cushion to disobey God because that's really what it is, is disobedience. Anytime you know to do something and you don't do it, the Bible says it is sin. If you know to do something, if God has put something on your heart and you purposely say, I'm not doing that right now, even though you told me this is for right now, that's disobedience. We find ways to make it cute. We find ways to make it sound good. We find ways to excuse ourselves from purpose. We find ways to excuse ourselves from who we're called to be. But guess what? You don't even know if you have that time. That time that you're using as your cushion, you don't even know if you have that time. You might say, well, I'm supposed to call and uh, tell so-and-so what God told me to tell her. But you know what? I'm going to wait until next week closer to the Thanksgiving break because then she'll be off and she'll probably, you know, her mind will probably be more clear. What if? I'm just, just, just for, just for our thinking this morning. 
What if she needed the instruction for Monday morning? What if what God has told you and what if what, what God has given you to share with her or what he's given you to encourage her in is something that she needs for Monday? Not next week for Thanksgiving. But in our minds, we try to process so that we have time to get ourselves together and to not be afraid and to try to figure out, okay, how, how can I, okay, let me give myself some more time. Okay, 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 now, now I'm ready. When God gives you an instruction and he tells you to share it with a person, when he tells you to encourage a person, when he tells you to be a blessing in a specific amount, you have to do that at that time with those exact instructions. We don't get to remix, filter it through our minds, filter it through our thinking, what we believe. Okay, I you know God told me this, but I feel like this is going to fit their situation better. You have no idea the conversations that other people are having with God, that God is counting on us to help them with. You have no idea. And people say, well, I don't, you know, I don't really ask God for signs. Do you know that other people do? And do you know that God will meet you at your level of maturity? And do you know that God will use other people? to answer prayers. Do you know that God uses us to answer prayers? So when you think about, oh, I'm going to wait to tell her that because I know uh, she on a trip right now. So uh, God told me to tell her something, but he told me to encourage her about her vision. But you know what? I'm going to wait till she gets back in town. You have no idea what decision she's going to have to make. You have no idea what conversation she's going to have between the time that God told you to do it and the time that you think you should do it. That time between when God says and when we want to, you have no idea what lies between that time span. There are people who are making decisions about their lives, that are making decisions about their business, that are making decisions about their children, that are making decisions about their bodies. And God is counting on us. He's counting on us to be obedient. And you say, well, I'm going to just wait because I, I don't really feel like talking right now. And really, you're just scared. You are scared. You are frightened at who you are inside. You are frightened at who God wants you to be. You are frightened at what God has asked you to do. And you're trying to bargain for more time. And while you're bargaining for more time, somebody else's life and business and family is over there hanging in the, in, in the balance because you are afraid to be who you are. And I want to tell you, who God has called you to be, you don't have to be afraid of her. She is, listen, she is wonderful. She is amazing. She is not there to hurt you. She is there to help you and so many other people. I was supposed to do a reel about this last week and I got busy and it got away from me. But I live in Southeast Texas. If you live in Southeast Texas, you live in Louisiana, you're familiar with storms. You're familiar with hurricane season. You're familiar, we, we get ready every year, hurricane season. We're watching the, watching the news, watching the weather. We're watching all these things to keep up with the hurricane. And listen, one of the most frustrating things about hurricanes and storms is that at some point, your power may go out. At some point, your electricity may go out. And usually they have teams that are planned to go in and to restore power. Usually they have people that are waiting. They send people from other states. They send people from other regions, other places. They send people to your area that are there waiting so that if something happens with your electricity, if something happens with the power, if there's an outage in the city, in the area, wherever it is, that people are ready to help their people that are ready to help restore power. Well, God showed me something. There are women who have gone through storms that have knocked their power out. And we are the people that are assigned to where they are. We are the people that are supposed to be there waiting to help restore power. And one of the most frustrating things, I saw somebody on Instagram, I saw somebody posted something and they showed these energy workers, which are, you know, who are powers through in Texas and some of Louisiana, I believe some other areas too, but that's not important. But they showed a picture of these guys that were on a lunch break 
And it was a really, really, <laughs> supposedly it was a really long lunch break. And they were like, really? We out of power and you sitting here and you taking a long break and you going and doing this and dilly-dallying everywhere? But that's us, though. There are women that are waiting been through storms of life, knocked all their power out, that are waiting on us, the workers, that God has dispatched and assigned to go and restore power to where they are, but some of us on a long lunch break. Y'all, they waiting on their power to come back on. They're waiting on inspiration. They are waiting to know, girl, I know you went through that storm. I know that storm may have taken everything that you have. I know that storm may have dismantled everything that you believe. But guess what? I am here. God has dispatched me here to help you. God has sent me here to restore what has been broken in your life. God has sent me to build up in you what has been torn down from the storm that you just went through. But some people are on lunch break right now. Some people are on lunch break because the camera crew ain't out and the camera crew not showing what a good job you're doing and the camera crew is not showing, oh, look at these faithful, dedicated workers that are here to restore power to our city. What is it? What What is it? We are here on assignment. When you are a woman inspired to live your destiny, we can't take long lunch breaks. We can't take time and say, well, I know I'm supposed to build her up and encourage her, but you know, I don't, mm, mm, mm. I'm going to wait. I'm going I'm to wait. I'm, you know, I'm going to give it a few days till I'm really, you know, feeling, you know, feeling good and feeling right. Listen, what God has put on your heart, what God has spoken to you, what God has given you, you better go ahead. What are you waiting on? There are people that are without power that are waiting on power to be restored. There are women without power who don't know who they are that are waiting on you to go and restore power. Waiting on you to say, you know what? I know that joker may have told you this and told you that, but you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I know you may feel weak right now, but you know what? There's going to be a day that you feel strong. I know you may feel torn down in your body, and I know your doctors may have told you that this is a hopeless situation, but I've been through something similar, and I can tell you right now that you have hope and that you can make it through this. You have somebody that you can count on. You have somebody that you can trust. You have somebody that's fighting for you in your corner. Do you know when you're going through something, one of the biggest blessings that you can have is knowing that somebody, just somebody, is genuine and fighting for you and in your corner? listen I don't know all the details I don't know everything you went through but I'm in your corner and I'm here let me tell y'all something from my from my personal life I have a my favorite cousin everybody knows I have a favorite cousin she has always been my favorite cousin if I got a problem with it oh well that's on you God bless you real good she is my favorite cousin and when I went through my situation with fibroids Listen, it was it was not a joke. It was not a game. It was life threatening. You hear me? When I went through, I had several fibroids that way I have to go back and look at look at my medical report because I've actually had two bouts with fibroids. But this last one, y'all, it was something. I had chronic anemia. I was dealing with uh, bleeding all the time. I was dealing with pain. I was dealing with I was fainting off and on because of the the chronic anemia because. I would get lightheaded and just pass out. It was scary, okay? And so I got to a point where my doctor said, look, this is not a joke. This is not a game. You need to go and see these people. They were uh, they had some kind of um, procedure where they could remove fibroids with like a laser or something like that. But you had to go and have a consultation first, right? And so I went to, my, I was going to my consultation and I told my cousin. And she said, okay, well, I'll go with you. And y'all, that blessed me so much that she, you know, that she wanted to go with me. And at that time, it was what I needed, okay? And so, we're at the consultation. They call me back and they say, you know, Lindsay, are you ready to go back and, and see the doctor? And I said, yeah. And I get up and I grab my purse and I look at her because I'm thinking she's going to go to the back with me. And she tells me, she says, no, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm here. To, I'm, I'm not going back there with you. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. And hey, y'all, I almost lost it. I almost burst into tears. And I, I could, I feel my tears welling up now. There was something about 
just her presence there that said, I don't have to know your business. I don't have to know what all the doctor says. I don't have to know all the ins and outs. I'm here on support for you. Because y'all know most people. Y'all know most people. They go to the doctor's appointment with your child. They want to know the ins and the outs and the who and the what. And what is this. Just people just nosy like that. Some people <laughs> some people are concerned. But some people are just nosy like that. Child, they couldn't stand to be in no doctor's office and not know what's going on. Child, they want to let me go. Ooh, let me, okay. Yeah, I'm going to go in with you. And they just want to know, you know, what the doctor's going to say. They're just interested in the story. But she told me, she said, no, I'm just here. And y'all, when I tell you I had to, I had to really sit with that thing, that God had sent somebody to be there. Just, I mean, just, just be there. Not just, just to be there, to know that she was just there to be there. She didn't want to know anything. She didn't want to know anything about the surgery, the procedure. Nothing. She was just there. When I tell y'all that blessed me. I, that that thing that thing blessed me and i'm you i'm used to my family being supportive i'm used to that like my family is the bomb.com you know you see people say uh your family and your friends would not be the ones to support mine are i don't have that testimony i'm not, and i'm not finna lie trying to you know blend with everybody else god has blessed me with good family and good friends and they are always supportive but in that moment i didn't even know that i needed that because everybody knows I'm sensitive hearted and I love people and I love to be loved and I love support and all of that. But I was okay. I was like, I'm good. I'm fine. You know, I'm, I'm going to go take care of this, get this, you know, consultation done so I can figure out the next step so I can start feeling better and feel better in my body. And I'm okay. And I didn't know that I was going to have that moment. And I didn't know that I was going to need my, I was going to need her. My cousin, my favorite cousin, I didn't know that I was going to need her in that moment. I didn't know that, but God knew. Now, what if, what if she had said, oh, child, Lizzie, uh, she had fibroid surgery before, so she good. She can go by herself. She grown. She all right. She told me she good. She don't need me to go, so I'm good. It's okay. I don't have to go. What if I would have missed that moment? I would have missed that reassurance that I needed from God at that moment. If she had just said, Lindsay is a big girl. She, you know, she good. This ain't her first rodeo. She good. She can go ahead. What if? That's why I'm saying you are important. That's why you have to be inspired to live your destiny because it's tied to so many other people. Everybody wants to talk about the events and the podium and the planning and the this and the that and the platform and all this. But let me tell you something. God has called us to people. Don't let that fly over your head. He has called us to people. My greatest ministry... It's tied to encouraging women, pushing women, pushing them forward in their destiny. Not the events that I've hosted. Not the chargers and the chair covers and the music and the decor and the balloons. It's people, y'all. It's not all this other stuff. We can use those things as avenues to help people. And I believe in creating experiences for people. I believe in, you know, having beautiful settings for women to go to because otherwise they may not take time for themselves and be in settings like that. Like, I get that. But the greatest thing is loving people. It's about the people. It's not these platforms. Let me tell you something. It's not the platforms. It's not the speaking engagements. It's not the where can I go next. It's not the where can I wear this outfit to. Or where can I wear this jacket to. Or where can I get my hair and makeup done and go be seen. It's about the people. Your destiny is about people. It's about the people that you touch. I talk about my mama's events. I talk about the things that she hosted because I worked closely with her and I love to see it. 
But I also talk about who she really was and how she helped people. When people talk about my mama, they talk about how she pointed them to Jesus. They talk about how they helped, she helped them with their self-esteem. They talk about how she helped them personally. And some people, she never even was face to face with them, but through tapes and CDs and all this, she was able to reach them. It's about people, y'all. It's about people, genuinely helping people. Not this fake women's empowerment, you go girl. I'll, no, ma'am. Real ministry, yes, it's real ministry. That It's about touching people. It's about leading people to God. It's about putting them in touch with Jesus. That's what it's really about. It's not all this other stuff. Ooh, child. I could I could park right there and and, and give me and give me a drink uh, from Sonic and stay right there for a minute, but I'm not. But it's about people. There are women who are waiting on you to be who God has called you to be, so that they can see it. They're waiting on you to be who God has called you to be, so that they can sense that and experience that, so they know that what they feel and what God has told them, they aren't crazy. Y'all, we take for granted. That we know and we've experienced the voice of God. We take that for granted. There are people who need confirmation. They're like, we need confirmation. There are people out here who are just getting to know him. And they need to know that what they dreamed and what they seen and who they feel they're supposed to be inside. They need to know they're not crazy. They need to see that in you. When you're a woman who's inspired to live her destiny, you are not afraid to inspire others. Who have you inspired? Who have you encouraged? I'm just, I'm just asking. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking. Who have you encouraged? Who have you pushed and said, girl, I know it's a lot going on, girl, but I know you can do this. You, you got it. Everybody knows anything my friends and family do, I'm going to gas you up. I'm going to hype you up. Oh, Yes. If you singing a song, I'm going to be yelling, go ahead. I'm going to be yelling, I know that's right. If you preaching, I'm going to be your amen corner. If you post something and it's cute, I'm going to be sending you the fire emoji and say, you go girl, you look good, you better be cute, you better go ahead. I, that, that's, I like to encourage people. If anybody ever tell you Lindsay or Hater, you can tell them they a lie to their face because I like to encourage people, baby. Because it's enough people out here being sour. It's enough people out here discouraging people. It's enough people out here. Hallelujah. It's enough of that out here. Where are the encouragers? Where are the pushers? Where are the move forward women? Where they at? That's what I like. That's what I'm talking about. Cut up. You see somebody trying to do the right thing? Don't say, well, I'm scared if I encourage them. Then they're going to get the big head. And if they do, what? Why does, why does what God tell us have to go through this filter? Why I got to go through this, this, this filter and this funnel all the time through what we think? Why we can't just take it right at what he tells us? Why you got to take it through the, well, I don't know if they're ready for that encouragement yet. I don't know if I, I, I don't want, I'm scared if I encourage them, they may stop what they're doing. What? Who told you that? You better encourage them people to go ahead on. People still need encouragement. We take for granted because we're grown that people don't need encouragement. They do. Let me tell you something. Especially when you're trying to live right, when you're trying to do the right thing, people need encouragement. And people say, well, you don't get a trophy for that. That's what you're supposed to do. If they're doing it and you see them, encourage them. And even the ones that's strong. And thank you. Because sometimes when, you, when you're when you strong and you're encouraging everybody else, then it's like, okay, well, you, oh, all right. Whew. Imagine how that would boost them to receive it back. I'm strong. I've had to be strong in some situations I didn't want to be. I'm strong and mature in some things I don't want to be. I want to be petty sometimes. I want to be weak. I want to lay down sometimes and just say, you know what? This is not my fight. I'm not doing this. I'm not praying for them. I'm not worried about it. Leave me alone. I don't care. But I can't do that. I've had to be strong in situations. But do you know how it blesses me? When I get a text from my dad that says, Punkin, I'm so proud of you. You're doing a good job. 
When my brother texts me and say, hey, girl, go ahead. I see you. I see what you're doing. I love it. When Miss Laverne squeezes me tight and say, hey, baby, I'm glad to see you. I'm so proud of you. That blesses me. When I get text messages from my friends, when I get calls from my friends, when I get comments from my friends that say, you're doing a good job. I appreciate what you're doing. Keep going. It blesses me. Everybody needs encouragement. Everybody. Even the people that you think are pieced together and got it all together and don't need it, they need encouragement. It's kind of like money. You, you may have some, but more is always nice. <laughs> okay? You, 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 listen, let me tell you something. You got people that are millionaires that will still receive a blessing, that will still receive you want to give them something. Because when it comes to encouragement, we all need it. You don't know what people are going through. You don't know what they're dealing with. You don't know what they've had to climb and claw through that week. You don't know who they've had to work with and what came to try to destroy them. You don't know what their body has done that week. You don't know. Child, you better encourage them people. It's free. Like, People be acting like encouragement is really going to bankrupt. I, like, really? You don't have encouragement to give? Really? Okay, so you think since, since they're strong, they don't need your encouragement. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Everybody needs encouragement. Those women need to know that they can get through where they are. They need to know, girl, I know you have anxiety right now. I know that you're worried about this situation. I know that you're confused about this, switch, this situation. But God can help you where you are. Women still need to hear that. The enemy will tell you, oh, that's cliche. They don't need to hear that. They've heard that a million times. Let me tell you something. When it comes to what God speaks to you to speak to another person, I don't care how many times they've heard it. If God tells you to tell them at that specific time, he already knows what it's going to do for them. He already knows what it's going to do for their heart. He already knows what it's going to do for their life. He already knows what it's going to do for their destiny. So you have to be obedient to speak what it is that God has given to you. And it doesn't have to be in a microphone. It doesn't have to be on a live. It doesn't. Listen. God is moving and he is depending on us. We are those workers, as I mentioned before, we are those workers that have been dispatched to regions to help women whose power has been knocked out by the storm that they've just gone through. We are here. We've been dispatched to help restore power to their area. But will you be on a long lunch break? Or will you be on assignment? Will you complete the task that you've been assigned to do? Will you do what God has spoken to you to do without going through that filter of let me think about it and let me see, you know, what this really means and, and how I need to do this and how I need to wait. Mm -mm. God wants our obedience. He wants our willingness and he wants our obedience. And we are here to restore power to women who have been through storms their power's been knocked out and they need to know. Yeah, you, you can make it. You can get through it. You can go another day. You can keep waking up every morning and pan, plan, pan, planting your feet on the floor and saying, God, it's me and you today. This is another day. What do you have for me to do today? What is it that you want me to say? God wants us to be women inspired to live our destiny. But will you do it? Will you do it? Will you be continually inspired? You say, how am I inspired? I'm inspired through relationship with God. I'm inspired through my identity, through the word of God. Listen, God hypes us up. Listen, there's correction in the word of God. There's instruction in the word of God, but he's also hyping us up all through the thing. Like, listen, all through the word of God, go, go look through it. I'll post something later on today. All through the word, he's hyping us up. Listen, he wants you to know who you are so that you can be inspired to live your destiny. And he said, I don't feel inspired. It ain't a feeling. It's a decision. I'm going to do this. I'm in here for the long haul. I've made a commitment to God. I've made a commitment to God that I'm going to do what he told me to do. I'm going to be who he told me to be. 
and watch how your life changes when you say yes. Watch. The devil wants you to think, oh child, uh uh, it's, ain't nothing gonna happen. Ain't nothing gonna change. My daddy says all the time, get a clue from the devil. When he starts talking crazy like that, you already know. Results are coming. So God wants you to be encouraged to be inspired to live your destiny. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, I hope that, it's, that this has helped you today. I'm, I need to eat something. I'm getting tongue-tied these last few minutes, y'all. <laughs> I need to go eat something, but I love you. I'm praying for you. Um, if you have not already joined our mailing list, if you've not subscribed already, go to destiny-momentum.com and subscribe there. Uh, we have a Destiny Momentum Masterclass that's coming up in January. We're going to get that started in January. I love you too. We're going to get started in January. I want to encourage you to go and sign up for that. God is doing amazing things and he is requiring more of us. He's requiring more of us. You can't sit on your destiny next year. Like you, no, we're not, we're not taking that into 2022. That whole, I'm going to do it next year. I'm going to do it later. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. We're not doing that. We're not carrying that into the new year. We're not. I'm not going to let you. So if you've not already done that, I want to encourage you to go and sign up for that. Uh, there's going to be all kind of bonuses and child. It's just, and ain't. Thank you. We're not, sis. We're not carrying that procrastination into 2022. We're just not, we're not doing it. We're moving forward. We're getting on track. We're getting focused. We're restoring power to the ladies that have lost it through their storms. All right? All right. Well, I love y'all, and I will see y'all next time. And I'll be sure to post those things a little bit later on that I talked about earlier for you. And also, we're going to be doing a giveaway. I'll be popping up on a live probably on tomorrow night with a giveaway. So, I want to encourage you to be on the lookout for that. Turn your notifications on. How do I turn notifications on, Lindsay? Hit that bell right there at the top of my page and you'll be able to get notifications for when I go live. I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for your prayer. Thank you for your support. And I will see y'all next time. Destiny Momentum. We're moving forward.